and on this Advent Sunday, a very warm welcome to Sunday Live from St Mary's Little Pandon and St Paul's Harlow Town Centre. The Lord be with you and also with you. Do be joining in live chat during our service and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Well, this is Advent Sunday and very soon in the service we will be lighting virtually an Advent candle and you may wish to have to hand a candle uh, which you can light um, at that moment so that we can all share with, with one another in this. For we have gathered as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Thank you so much to all who are taking part this morning. And our thanks now to Samuel, together with Simon, as you lead us in, we are marching in the light of God. Let's, as we sing this, be wishing God's peace to one another. Our risen Lord Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his kingdom there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let's greet one another as we sing together, We Are Marching in the Light of God.
Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. Wake up, get ready, line the streets to shout, anticipate the coming of your king. Rehearse the anthem, put the bunting out, and rouse the neighbours with advent caroling. Wake up, get ready, line the streets to shout. His rule will end the reign of suffering. So come with your despair, depression, doubt. Anticipate the coming of your king. Wake up, get ready, line the streets to shout. Anticipate the coming of your king. The Collect for the First Sunday in Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we light the first Advent candle, which is to commemorate the Patriarch. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors. 
to you be praise and glory forever. You called the patriarchs to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promised fulfillment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your Christ, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. God calls you out of darkness to walk in the light of his coming. You are God's children. Lord, make us one as we walk with Christ today and forever. A familiar flame is ignited, a flame of hope, to remind us again of the road we have travelled. For the very light that we have kindled exists only because our God once declared that it should be. And though we struggle to make sense of the world that surrounds us, and pathways ahead are shrouded in uncertainty and foreboding, we will not surrender to despair or indifference, for God's purpose prevails even when obscured by our expectations.
we come to our time of confession. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello and welcome to Virtual Sunday School. Today we're going to look at a Bible verse in Philippians. So we'll start by looking at the Bible verse in Philippians and then we'll head over for a special game with Rob, Jordan and Ollie. I know, how fun's that? Then we'll have a craft, prayer and finish with a final thought. So grab your drink and a biscuit and let's do this. Stuck at home with time to spare Can't go outside, you're not going anywhere Why don't you pull up a chair or pull up a suit Tune into Virtual Sunday School We have a craft to do and a story or two Say hello to Nat, she's stuck at home too Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School? at a Bible verse in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 which says do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your requests known to God supplication means asking for something humbly and when you really mean it so don't be anxious now I am a bit of a worrier and this year in particular there has been plenty to worry about so I love coming back to this verse in Philippians because it reminds me to trust in God and that I can talk to him about anything that I'm worried or anxious about. This week we thought we'd play a little bit of a game and put Rob, Jordan and Ollie to the test to see how easily they can worry about something silly. Now before we head over to the game I must stress do not try this at home. It's a game for you to watch and laugh at, but not join in with, because it could be dangerous for children. Oh, hello there. It's been a while. I'm here with Rob and Jordan to play a very special game. Suspended Fear Splash! So the way that this game works is we have a many layered water balloon, and we will each have to take one layer of the water balloon off using a very sharp knife. One layer at a time. That's, that's the aim. And then we'll see who it is who's left at the end with a watery explosion to the face! So without any further ado, let's play my favourite game, Suspended Fear Splash! It's always me first. Kids, don't play this at home. Do it right. You, like, you got to slice it really gently, all right? Yeah. Eyes open. No fear. No fear. <laughs> It's not going. That's cut, I'm calling it. I'm having that. No, you got to cut it off. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh! 
got a... Oh! I'm pretty sure there's another layer, have you heard him? They're clear. The, the other layers yeah, are clear. No, there's another layer. There's a see-through <laughs> layer in that job. For goodness <laughs> sake! <laughs> 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 Careful! Careful! <laughs> Don't take it can get anxious and worried. You just watched three grown-ups freaking out over a balloon and a bit of water. And you know what? Worrying about things doesn't help one little bit. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 27, Jesus said, which of you by being anxious can add one single hour to his span of life? When you worry, it doesn't help anything. It just makes you worried. But someone who can help us is God. So next time you feel worried or anxious, remember that verse in Philippians. Send up a little prayer and talk to God about it, because he is right there with you. Craft time! This week, we're gonna make some bookmarks. So you'll need some cards, scissors, and pens. First, you'll need to cut your bookmark out, like this. Next, write on the Bible verse from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Then you can decorate your bookmark and start using it in your Bible or in any other book. For today's prayers, we're going to hand all our worries over to God. To do this, I want you to hold your fists as tight as you can, as if you're holding all your worries in there. Ah! Then, when I say hand all our worries over, we're going to open our hands and hand all our worries over to God. Dear God, thank you that you are always with us. There are lots of things that I am worried about. And today, I hand all those worries over to you. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. And so, a final thought. Everyone gets anxious sometimes, and we all worry about things. But the Bible tells us not to worry, as we have a God who is always with us and wants to help us. So next time you're worried, why not try scrunching up all those worries in your hand and pray while you hand them over to God. Virtual Advent Calendar is starting this week! Tune in to our YouTube channel on the 1st of December for our very first video and then every day until the 24th of December and tell your friends it's gonna be awesome! See you next week! Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School? Oh, Jordan, come on, man. My, my, my shoes are really wet, They're really soggy. For some notices. Next Sunday, 6th December, is Food Bank Sunday at both St Mary's and St Paul's. And this is our first Sunday back um, after this second lockdown. So do let's be generous. Now on this occasion, we're not collecting food, but Christmas gifts are for adults or for children and Food Bank will hand these out. Please wrap your gifts indicating whether they are intended for an adult or a child, in either case male or female. Gifts may be brought to St Paul's on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays or Fridays between 12 and 2.30 when we are open for prayer. Come in as it were for prayer but then leave your uh, gift at the front of church and someone will find it there. 
Alternatively, you can bring it into St Mary's when St Mary's is open for prayers uh, from 10 till 11 on Wednesdays. Or indeed, bring them into our services next Sunday, either St Mary's or St Paul's. With regard to what gift to bring, any gift is suitable for an adult, but please make sure that it isn't something that could be shared with a child. Otherwise, parents tend to give them away to their children, understandably, but we want to make sure parents have something for themselves as well. For children, please don't give soft toys. They get so many of them. Likewise, food bank tend to get overwhelmed by specifically Christmas items that people give them, so please avoid these. Um, but anything else would be great. Uh, crafts and small toys are good suggestions and ideas. In addition, uh, Food Bank are doing a 12 Days of Christmas appeal and details of those um, are on the welcome sheet which has been circulated. Thank you so much for your support for Food Bank Sunday. Details of all our Christmas events and services are on our welcome sheet and there's details there of a Christmas hamper that you can buy and thereby uh, support the St Mary's Church development. Now at St Paul's we will be having carol concerts at 11 o'clock on Saturday the 12th of December and 11 o'clock on Sunday the 13th of December. And these carol concerts will be as much like a carol service as possible, although we, uh, although we can't sing. We'll be joined by the Demurk Choir and there'll be readings and a talk in the normal sort of way. To come along to this you do need to book and there are 30 bubbles. You can have between one and six in a bubble and you just book yourself a bubble. There's uh, no charge. To book either contact the parish office or visit Eventbrite and if you are on a computer or tablet or smartphone you'll find details underneath here and there's also details on our welcome sheet. So um, you can also book at our service at St Paul's on the 6th of December. So do book your place quickly. There will also be um, a carol service um, at St Mary's just before Christmas. We do hope you can join us for these and other events. The first reading is taken from Lamentations 5, 1 to 11. Lamentations 5, 1 to 11. Remember, Lord, what has happened to us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We have become fatherless, our mothers are widows. We must buy the water we drink, a wood can be had only at a price. Those who pursue us are at our heels. We are weary, weary and find no rest. We are submitted to Egypt and Arisea to get enough bread. Our ancestors sinned and are no more and we bear their punishment. Slaves rule over us and there is no one to free us from their hands. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the desert. Our skin is as hot as the oven, feverish from hunger. Women have been violated in Zion and virgins in the towns of Judah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lamentations chapter 5 verses 12 to 22. Our princes are being hanged by their thumbs and our elders are treated with contempt. Young men are led away to work at millstones and boys stagger under heavy loads of wood. The elders no longer sit in the city gates. The young men no longer dance and sing. Joy has left our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. The garlands have fallen from our heads. Weep for us because we have sinned. Our hearts are sick and weary and our eyes grow dim with tears. 
for Jerusalem is empty and desolate, a place haunted by jackals. But Lord, you remain the same forever. Your throne continues from generation to generation. Why do you continue to forget us? Why have you abandoned us for so long? Restore us, O Lord, and bring us back to you again. Give us back the joys we once had. Or have you utterly rejected us? Are you angry with us still? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, Heavenly Father, be with me as I speak. Be with all those who are listening at home. And Father, touch our hearts and minds with just what each one of us needs to hear. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we are still in the book of Lamentations, so we're in the beginning of Advent and it's kind of appropriate really in this time of watching and waiting uh, that we have in Advent that we are still in this space of lament uh, and sorrow, but within it uh, there is much to learn I think about um, hope and so that's my kind of theme for today, hope for the hopeless and later on I'm going to talk about uh, those three words restore return and renew um, but to begin with where we find ourselves in the story is pretty terrible so just a, a warning about some images and, and subject matter that might be uh, triggering or upsetting for some people um, it is difficult subject matter um, there's a kind of clue in the name lamentations as we've been hearing over the past uh, weeks and uh, the whole of the book begins with look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow and sadly uh, where we find the people of Judah right now in this story is in a pretty terrible place they were um, people survived the Babylonian siege but then found themselves caught uh, between the Egyptians and the Assyrians um, um, and these really difficult words they feel disgraced they feel they've lost their inheritance everything's gone to strangers and foreigners they feel orphans they feel like they're fatherless and mothers are like widows they have to buy even the most basic commodities of water and, and firewood they're exhausted and brought low and uh, even their princes hung up by their hands uh, just you know the young and the old everything is terrible and there's this feeling in all that that they've been forsaken by God and that kind of cry from the heart why do you forsake us for so long there are times when all of us feel where is God and this pandemic might be one of those for some of you you might be feeling and there is a sense of how long oh Lord how long in this whole situation as well um, and there are many other reasons why people might feel grief or despair or hopelessness. And, and sometimes all we can do is cry out in pain and sorrow, Lord, have mercy. That feeling joy is gone from our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. It's hard to imagine that when you feel like that, how you could feel joy again. So that's the place that we're in with these folks uh, in this story right now. And there's also the rather sort of the slightly unhealthy thing, I think, that we can sometimes get into when we are in these situations of kind of a, if you like, a blame culture, a feeling like it must be somebody else's fault. And they're saying here, our ancestors have sinned, oh, it's their fault, they've died, we're suffering the punishment that they deserved. And that's not such a healthy place to be in either. So, but a turning point thankfully comes in this story where although the people are, are grief stricken and are in this terrible place, they suddenly kind of have this realisation. 
we have sinned. So we're not blaming it all on our ancestors or somebody else anymore. We're realizing that we have sinned. And this is a very important uh, turning point and something for all of us to, um, you know, it's easy to get into that kind of everything is somebody else's fault. And we need to take responsibility for our own actions. And we also always as Christians need to examine ourselves and come before God and say, where am I falling short? What am I doing wrong? Things to happen to these folks in this story as well, that they begin to realise that actually some of this is to do with their own sin. And then they turn to worship. And that's something we were reminded of last week, weren't we? That God is good all the time. All the time God is good. He is who he says he is. He is still there. He is still in the heavens. And so to turn to worship, even when we don't feel like it, even when we're in a terrible place, is really important. And here we see it here. You, Lord, are enthroned forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. Honouring God for who he is, a very important part of what we need to do, even when we feel despair. You, O oh Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures to all generations. And then towards the end of the reading, we get these words, restore, return, renew. Restore us to yourself, Lord, that we may return. Renew our days as of old. And then in the last verse, there's a kind of a doubt in again, you know, unless you're so angry with us that you'll never forget. But I think we know, we know the end of that story. We know in the light of Jesus that that there is nothing that we can do to take ourselves completely away uh, from the love of God, that he will always be wanting to reach out to us. The, we can only cut ourselves off by denying him. But if we do turn to him, he will always hold out that hand. And that's the really important message that I want to leave us with, that these words, restore, return, renew. So here is the good news. Here is the hope for the hopeless that God's mercy is bigger than any of our mistakes, any of your mistakes, any of mine, any of ours. And he was bigger than the mistakes of the people of Israel. And we see that when we see the big picture, when we see the whole story, we know that God's mercy was and is given to us endlessly. Restore us to yourself, O Lord, that we may return. Renew our days as of old. So I want us to, to think about Jesus as the kind of ultimate restorer, repairer and renewer. So one of my favourite programmes is The Repair Shop, as I'm sure lots of people know. And these are very lovely people, very wonderful craftsmen, and they show such love not only to the thing that they're repairing and restoring and renewing, but to the story of the object and the people that bring the things to be repaired. And I was thinking of Jesus as, you know, a craftsman in his human life and being the ultimate restorer repair. And one of the things, if you ever watch the show, you'll see is that they, they, they'll fix the thing, but they, it doesn't lose its identity. It's still, it's, it is renewed and repaired and restored, but in the way that it still has the kind of, the essence of it and sometimes the signs of, of the journey it's been through and its kind of brokenness in it. And it made me think of how that was a really good kind of metaphor for, for um, us and for Christ and for what he does for us. And, and for the fact that um, and, until the time when he comes again, he still has, he still has the, the holes in his hands from the nails of the cross, even though he is uh, in the heavens and he is interceding for us. And I, I wanted us to just focus on that wonderful hope that he is our ultimate restorer, repairer and renewer. And what good news that is that we have to give people in these times. And if we're feeling um, hopeless or we know somebody else that is, uh, because the love of God shown to, for us through his son Jesus is the hope of salvation for us and for the world and we learn from Jeremiah and Lamentations that our faith must not fail even and especially when times are hard and how much more is this true because of Jesus and 
uh, that picture of me think of, of Peter. And I remembered those words, uh, Christ's words to Peter in Luke 22, 31 to 32. Satan demanded to have you, but I have prayed for you. Jesus intercedes for us in the heavenlies. He is praying for us that, our, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, and note that Jesus doesn't say if you turn again, when you turn again, strengthen your brothers. So I wanted to remind us, even if we're feeling or those people uh, in that story in a place of, of despair, we need to remember to turn back to Christ. And then when we feel stronger and we feel restored, then turn and strengthen others. Because God's grace brings us back from the brink. It lifts us out of the pit. It saves us and we have a duty to save others. So what will you do to restore, return and renew hope today? To bring hope to the hopeless. This is the great hope we have to offer uh, Christ in people's lives. It's my hope, your hope, the only hope there is. So let's do something about it today. Amen. Let us pray. 
Lord, we lift our voices to you in prayer. We pray for all in this world, affected by poverty, famine and war, and the scars it has left. Give them hope for the future and courage to live it. May those who lead them be blessed with wisdom and compassion. Be with all the leaders of the world in their duties. May they know your teaching and practice it in their leadership of their people, in the strange times in which we live. We pray for the Queen, the royal family, sharing their example and love with the people of this realm. Be with our government, who have difficult decisions to make. May all leaders of this country be able to, sh- to work together, helping us through difficult times. Show them that working together will promote a unified community and loyalty for the future. Please be in the Brexit negotiations that the best outcome will be obtained for all of us. We thank you for our clergy, for their wisdom and their caring and guidance, helping us to receive and practice your teaching. Lord, be with all members of the emergency services and keep them safe and well. Be with key workers in whichever position they may be as they serve their community. In our town we pray to be brought through this pandemic stronger in bonds with each other. We thank you for health workers and particularly think of PAH and all the staff under great pressure once again, as the numbers affected by COVID have risen. We pray that all people can remember and carry out the rules laid out for our safety and others in order that we all make it through. Be with those, Lord, who have died, those still suffering and the bereaved, that they may know your love and mercy. In this time of Advent, we, re- we remind ourselves of the birth of your son Jesus. We ready ourselves to celebrate. Born in a simple stable, few visitors, no great feast of a turkey dinner. As we worry about the Christmas we're liable to be having, let's just remember this simple scene. And it did sustain us. There will be a time soon, Lord, when we can meet together again in fellowship, where we can return to being with our loved ones. Lord, this we really ask for you from you. Romans fifteen verse thirteen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you for sharing with us this morning. And thank you for those who've shared with us by contributing. Um, Our thanks to Samuel, together with Simon, to Donna and Jenny for the readings, for Jokey for the sermon, to Tracy for the prayers. Our final hymn is our offerings hymn. And there is an opportunity to make an offering either by visiting our website and details. If you're watching on a tablet or a smartphone or computer, you'll find details underneath here on YouTube. Alternatively, if you have our welcome sheet, um, there are details there, or as I mentioned, simply visit the website. And so we have our final offerings hymn together.
We commit ourselves and the offerings of our lives to God. For yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. An Advent Blessing May God, the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give you grace to prepare for life eternal. Amen. May God the Son, who came to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, by whose working the Virgin Mary conceived the Christ, help you bear the fruits of holiness. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you now and always. 
Amen. God bless and see you next week on Sunday Live or at St Mary's 9.30 or St Paul's 11 o'clock. And just to remind you again that it's Food Bank Sunday next week and gifts may be brought in to St Paul's as well during the week at the times I mentioned. God bless. Our suffering Savior, Jesus Christ stung upon the cross, sinless man, ruler of creation. In his death we see mercy's cost, as we trust in our suffering Savior. Our hope remains, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We rejoice in our living Savior, on the third day He rose from death. As the Spirit of Christ lives in us, we are raised in His righteousness. Give praise to our living Savior Lift high His name Christ has died Christ is risen Christ will come again Christ has died Christ is risen Christ will come again We have hope in our coming Savior in the day when in Christ will rise Made anew with the whole creation Sharing His everlasting life As we wait for our coming Savior We will proclaim Christ has died Christ is risen Christ will come again Christ has died Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come.